Majjhima Nikaya, Section 4, The Division of Expositions, Vibhangavagga, Sutta number 131, Bhadde Karatta Sutta, Discourse on the Ideal Lover of Solitude. Thus have I heard. On one occasion, the Blessed One was living at Savati in Jeta's Grove, Anatapindika's Park. There he addressed the bhikkhus thus. Bhikkhus, Venerable Sir, they replied. The Blessed One said this. Bhikkhus, I shall teach you the summary and exposition of the ideal lover of solitude. Listen and attend closely to what I shall say. Yes, Venerable Sir, the bhikkhus replied. The Blessed One said this. Let not a person revive the past, or on the future build his hopes. For the past has been left behind, and the future has not been reached. Instead, with insight let him see each presently arisen state. Let him know that and be sure of it, invincibly, unshakably. Today the effort must be made. Tomorrow death may come. Who knows? No bargain with mortality can keep him and his hordes away. But one who dwells thus ardently, relentlessly, by day, by night, it is he, the peaceful sage has said, the ideal lover of solitude. And how, bhikkhus, does one trace back the past? He thinks, I was of such form in the past, and brings the light to bear on it. He thinks, I was of such feeling in the past, and brings the light to bear on it. He thinks, I was of such perception in the past, and brings the light to bear on it. He thinks, I was of such generative causes in the past, and brings delight to bear on them. He thinks, I was of such consciousness in the past, and brings delight to bear on it. That is how, bhikkhus, one traces back the past. And how, bhikkhus, does one not trace back the past? He thinks, I was of such form in the past, but brings no delight to bear on it. He thinks, I was of such feeling in the past, but brings no delight to bear on it. He thinks, I was of such perception in the past, but brings no delight to bear on it. He thinks, I was of such generative causes in the past, but brings no delight to bear on them. He thinks, I was of such consciousness in the past, but brings no delight to bear on it. That is how, bhikkhus, one does not trace back the past. And how, bhikkhus, does one yearn for the future? He thinks, I may have such form in the future, and brings delight to bear on it. He thinks, I may have such feeling in the future, and brings delight to bear on it. He thinks, I may have such perception in the future, and brings delight to bear on it. He thinks, I may have such generative causes in the future, and brings delight to bear on them. He thinks, I may have such consciousness in the future, and brings delight to bear on it. That is how, bhikkhus, one yearns for the future. And how, bhikkhus, does one not yearn for the future? He thinks, I may have such form in the future, but brings no delight to bear on it. He thinks, I may have such feeling in the future, but brings no delight to bear on it. He thinks, I may have such perception in the future, but brings no delight to bear on it. He thinks, 
I may have such generative causes in the future, but brings no delight to bear on them. He thinks I may have such consciousness in the future, but brings no delight to bear on it. That is how, Bikus, one does not yearn for the future. And how, Bikus, is one vanquished in regard to presently arisen states? Here, Bikus, an untaught ordinary person who has no regard for noble ones and is unskilled and undisciplined in their dhamma, who has no regard for true men and is unskilled and undisciplined in their dhamma, regards material form as self, or self as possessed of material form, or material form as in self, or self as in material form. He regards feeling as self, or self as possessed of feeling, or feeling as in self, or self as in feeling. He regards perception as self, or self as perception, or perception as in self, or self as in perception. He regards generative causes as self, or self as generative causes, or generative causes as in self, or self as in generative causes. He regards consciousness as self, or self as possessed of consciousness, or consciousness as in self, or self as in consciousness. That is how one is drawn into presently arisen states. And how, Bhikkhus, is one invincible in regard to presently arisen states? Here, Bhikkhus, a well-taught noble disciple who has regard for noble ones and is skilled and disciplined in their dhamma, who has regard for true men and is skilled and disciplined in their dhamma, does not regard material form as self or self as possessed of material form or material form as in self or self as in material form. He does not regard feeling as self or self as possessed of feeling or feeling as in self or self as in feeling. He does not regard perception as self or self as possessed of perception, or perception as in self, or self as in perception. He does not regard generative causes as self, or self as possessed of generative causes, or generative causes as in self, or self as in generative causes. He does not regard consciousness as self, or self as possessed of consciousness, or consciousness as in self, or self as in consciousness. That is how one is not drawn into presently arisen states. Let not a person revive the past, or on the future build his hopes. For the past has been left behind, and the future has not been reached. Instead, with insight let him see each presently arisen state. Let him know that, and be sure of it, invincibly, unshakably. Today the effort must be made. Tomorrow death may come. Who knows? No bargain with mortality can keep him and his hordes away. But one who dwells thus ardently, relentlessly, by day, by night, it is he, the peaceful sage has said, the ideal lover of solitude. So it was with reference to this that it was said, Bhikkhus, I shall teach you the summary and exposition on the ideal lover of solitude. That is what the Blessed One said. The bhikkhus were satisfied and delighted in the Blessed One's words. So.